The Call of the Pack by Elliot Hamer Read by Delio Pera The wolf stalked through the damp grass, his pace quick as his eyes scanned the ridge line before him. Warily, for something felt wrong this night, he crested the rise and took in the sight before him. An ominous storm hung overhead, intermittent flashes illuminating its unnatural purple-black hues. The valley beneath was hounded by a tempest of rain and lightning, and the humid air vibrated under the fluctuating pressure. The wolf's hairs were on end from a strange static on the wind. He bared his teeth and stared down the storm's approach, defiant amidst the tumult. The wolf's attention was drawn to the valley below as his kin bounded forward. He howled to catch their attention, but the solemn note was drowned out by the storm. Unsure of how he had broken from his pack, the wolf looked on despondently as they went on without him. As they raced into the storm's heart, the wolf observed a mighty beast emerging from the forest on the other side of the valley. Thick muscles bulged from its dense black form. Various scars and wounds adorned its flanks and cloven hooves scuffed the ground. Curved horns protruded from its broad skull, and its baying showed a beast in the clutches of rage, unafraid of the tempest that raged above. The pack sensed the threat, and a call to action went up. The foremost wolf raced forward, a turn of acceleration that caught the beast off guard. The wolf ducked a clumsy swing of horns and locked its jaws tightly on the beast's flank, but its teeth could not pierce the hide. The beast bucked hard, and the wolf fell to the floor, then was hammered into the mud as a swift kick of hooves connected with its ribs. Whelps of pain were lost to the howl of the storm as two other wolves attempted a head-on charge, but a scything sweep of the beast's horns gored the injured wolf, and the others called off their attack. From the ridgeline, the wolf looked down upon his fallen packmate. The blow had ended his life instantly. The beast puffed out a breath of contempt as the remaining wolves circled, hesitantly. A vicious growl brought all eyes to a single wolf. It called back the pack and stood alone in challenge, its thick black mane rustling in the wind. With fangs bared and eyes dilated, the pack alpha prepared to fight the beast alone. The beast scraped the ground and charged. A release of aggression and adrenaline bound for the Alpha. The wolf advanced in kind, its pace measured at first. But as the two combatants drew near, it leapt into the air. The beast reared to meet the challenge. Tor Whitetail awoke from the dream with a start. He blinked sweat from his eyes, and his vision cleared, revealing the metal ceiling of his quarters. He sat up and registered the icy temperature... Heavy, panting, vented steam from his mouth, and his skin tingled as the salty moisture beating across the surface of his body ran cold. Tor was a space wolf of Fenris, so while temperatures akin to his native climate would ordinarily be a rare comfort while seconded to the Death Watch, the icy bitterness he awoken to this hour was unnatural. What's more, he knew not how he had lost consciousness. Tor swung his feet to the chill floor, its brisk touch rousing him to full alert. He rose and went to a data panel by the door, wiping away the frost that had built up. He observed a temperature reading of minus 19 degrees Celsius. Tor checked the alerts, but all ship systems were reporting as normal. Murkai's teeth, he thought to himself. What just happened? He was no storm caller, yet his quarters had turned colder than an ice worm's lair. This had the mark of spirits and weird. The dream was so clear. Tor had felt the howl of the wind and the damp earth beneath the wolf's feet. Then the battle between wolf and beast. It had seemed as if he was witnessing events that had already come to pass. He was far from his kin, but he had felt a semicolon a call of the pack. Tor punched the door release and bounded out. He marched down the corridor, bare-chested, his exposed feet padding against the metal floor. 
Arriving at his destination, he entered unannounced to the robed figure of Sergeant Cadon, kneeling in meditation in the center of the room. The wolves are in peril, Brother Sergeant, Tor said, disturbing Cadon's meditations. We must lend aid. We have received no such call for aid, Tor, sighed Cadon. It wasn't the first time he had been required to manage the lack of discipline of the Sons of Rus. I saw it in a vision, Tor pressed. A great storm was gathering, not one of my homeworld, but, but an unnatural tumult born from the warp. Beneath it, a pack of wolves battled with a mighty horned beast. Caden raised his head to look at his intruder. A half-naked feral stood before him chest panting, eyes wild and sweating. Just so I understand, Tor, you suggest that I go before our watch captain, propose that we neglect our orders in favor of rerouting to an as yet unknown location to fight a horned beast based on a sudden dream from a single member of our company. Have you lost your mind, brother, or have you overdone it on the mooj? My quarters are colder than the void. Ice and frost are coated across every surface, Tor continued, not accepting his sergeant's perspective. If this was just a dream, explain why the spirits have left their mark. It was a semicol, Kaden, a summons in the common tongue. I know it in my heart that my pack calls. But it is not our duty to answer, Tor. Our duty is to the Emperor. That is why veterans join these ranks, for they should have the wisdom to see the bigger picture. Your duty is fulfilled by fighting here, under the orders of our watch captain, to enact the Emperor's will. Tor moved forward, looming over the kneeling form before him. For what, cousin? To call yet more Xenos filth that have barely managed to crawl off their native planet? We are space marines, Caden. Let us fight a greater enemy and earn our place at the Allfather's side. If the company will not go, then let me. Caden finally rose, taller and wider than Tor. The imperial fist drew back his hood to reveal close-cropped hair, chiseled features, and a creased brow. No, he said in a tone of finality. Now return to your quarters before I need question your loyalties further. Tor's fists clinched and his brow creased as he wrestled with his frustrations. He looked up at his superior in defiance, an unspoken challenge that hung in the air. The tension between the two men hung like a thread, and Caden was the first to cut it. Last time I checked, Caden began, his composure all but lost. A dog obeys the commands of its master, not the other way around. Tor snarled in anger, teeth bared and eyes wild. His capacity for reason had been reduced. The wolf within was straining for release. Caden looked on scornfully, his patience eroded. On the Chogorian steppes, began a quiet voice behind them. The greatest of hunters work with magnificent birds of prey. Tor turned to observe the relaxed form of Watch Captain Gashubai in the doorway. He knew not how long the White Scar had been observing the confrontation, but one hand resting idly on the hilt of his Chogorian tulwar was enough to douse Tor's fury. Many would wonder why such mighty beasts as the hawk and eagle do not fly alone, free from the bonds of servitude, Gashubai continued. True, the hawk would so free, but the harshness of the Chagorian steppes would soon reveal itself as rival predators challenge it at every turn. Thus, the harmony of human... Horse and hawk is a coalescence that has mastered its environment to become the apex predator of Chagoris. Gashubai looked to the space wolf. How many is how humanity will survive, Tor? We all know the price that was paid when brother fought brother. Our enemies grew in strength when our paths diverged. Without harmony, we will stumble across the plains of this galaxy until exhaustion claims us. 
and naught is left but emaciated scraps for the jackals. I cannot abandon my true brothers, Tor answered. They are in peril. Every instinct I have tells me so. Kashubai fixed his eyes upon Tor, and for many moments he weighed up the wolf before him. Tor fell to his appraisal as he waited for judgment. Kashubai had a relaxed and unassuming demeanor, but the whole company knew him as utterly formidable. Tor knew the next words his watch captain uttered would be the final say on the matter, and he would have to accept it. If there is but one crack in the unanimity of this brotherhood, Kashubi began, we will break in the face of the horrors of this galaxy. I will not have you compromise the harmony of our company, and... As such, I grant you your request. You may return to your chapter and pursue the Emperor's enemies by the side of your true brothers. Tor breathed a sigh of relief, but this concession left him with little elation. Trin hung in the air, and the dire threat he knew his chapter to be in meant dilemma awaited him at every turn. But the pack had called, and he would answer. Thanks for giving this a listen. As always, if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the bell so you can get notified when I do more of these. I have a four-day weekend coming up in about a week, so I plan to get a decent bit of reading done in that time. I am planning, as of right now, to do the next of the of the um, blah, 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 Severina Rain short stories. I'm blanking on the name of that one shadow of in the shadow of company company sh company of shadow i think something like that shadow there's shadows and there's companies and, and 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 i haven't read it yet so i'll be getting to that soon um ba -ba 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 -ba. these psychic awakening stories are they're hit and miss they're, they're definitely hit and miss i've enjoyed a few of them a lot like that that assassin one i had an absolute blast with it was just super fun but these space wolf ones i don't know I, I the space wolves are fairly one-dimensional in my opinion uh, they're just or or two-dimensional i suppose they just they're they're bland or angry <laughs> i um, if they're your thing then cool have at it they're just they're just not mine I, I like a little more nuance to my to my stories and my characters okay anyways that's enough for for my rambling I tend to go on and I could just yammer on for for minutes at a time about a whole lot of nothing thank you for listening I hope you enjoyed this if you do you know the, the like subscribe all that jazz and and share I've, I've started to ask people to do that I'm, I'm hoping to get some more female viewers listeners so share this, post it on your Twitters, your, your social medias, and uh, give me a hand here. Okay, thank you. Bye.